Hi, I'm Brian Peer, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy, denoted by delta G, is the energy available to do work. This definition will come in handy more in higher level chemistry and physics. What you'll need to know right now is whether or not your reaction is spontaneous based on that. If your delta G is less than zero, your reaction will be spontaneous. That means you can more or less just throw the reactants in a bucket and your reaction will happen. If your delta G is greater than zero, though, your reaction is non-spontaneous, meaning you'll have to add energy of some sort, usually either kinetic or heat. So in order to get, figure out if it's greater or less than zero, there's a calculation you can run through. Delta G equals delta H, which is your enthalpy, basically your heat, minus T, temperature in kelvins, times delta S, entropy. Entropy is the amount of disorder. If you have a positive S, then your disorder is increasing. Things are getting messier. Delta, if you have a negative delta S, then your, actually your order is increasing. Things are becoming more ordered. Your chemistry teacher will probably want you to find the delta G for any number of reactions and then tell whether or not it's spontaneous or not. So let's take this particular one. C3H8 plus 5O2 goes to 4H2O and 3CO2. Well, if we were asked to find out whether or not this is spontaneous, all we need to do is calculate Gibbs free energy. You'll be given these values usually, so you can just plug them into the equation. Delta G equals delta H, negative 290 kilojoules, minus T, we have of 125 kelvins, times delta S, negative 100 joules per kelvin. Alright, let's simplify. Multiplication first. Delta G equals negative 290 kilojoules. Multiplying this through can give us plus 12,500 joules. Alright, now you might, you might think that you just need to add at this point. Well, actually, check the units. This one's written in kilojoules, and this one's in joules. You need to make sure that your units are the same before you can add. Generally, teachers want your delta G written in joules, so convert kilojoules into joules. All I have to do is multiply by a thousand. Delta G equals negative 290,000 joules plus one 12,500 joules. All right, that's pretty simple. Now you just need to add them together. You get delta G equals negative 277,500 joules. And knowing that it's negative, it's less than zero, so your reaction is spontaneous. That's all there is to it. To recap, Gibbs free energy is the amount of energy available to do work. What you really need to know is whether or not it's less than zero. If it is less than zero, your reaction is spontaneous. If it's not, your reaction is non-spontaneous. This is the equation that you need to calculate delta G. Once you're given these values for any reaction, you can just plug them in and solve. Remember, when you get to this step, that you have to have everything in the same units, either kilojoules or joules. Most chemistry teachers like delta G in joules, so you might want to convert to that. After that, just check the sign, positive or negative, spontaneous or not, and you're done. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brent Preer. See you next time.